as you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pop. In 2020, it was a pig with a chip in its brain. In 2021, it's a monkey playing video games. Elon Musk's Neuralink has just unveiled its latest brain computer interface, showing a nine year old monkey named Pager controlling a game of Pong with its mind. Listen to this one. Mind reading technology might soon come from the realm of science fiction now to fact. We're talking about Elon Musk's latest side project. I believe it's a side hustle, his startup Neuralink. Well, it sounds like science fiction, but tonight Elon Musk says he plans to make it a reality. He's creating a brain implant that merges our brains with artificial intelligence. Now talking of a brain implant technology that they just put this chip, I guess, into your skull. Uh, and then you just... I don't know what, what good it does, but it's there, and then it follows you and tracks you. So this way my, my wife could keep track of my Dunkin' Donuts visits and all the rest. I don't know where this goes. And Elon Musk hopes to have the brain implant inside a patient's head by late next year. Elon Musk had positioned this as a way of potentially treating cognitive degenerative diseases. Right, right. But if you actually go back and look at other technologies, like for example, gene editing, that started off as a way to help with therapies and medical usage, but has now sort of turned into something more onerous. And you sort of worry this goes in a similar direction. And I, I've, I've said a lot about AI over the years, uh, but I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Um, and so, and hopefully it is a benign scenario, um, but I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. And this is extremely important. Musk, well, they're, hold on, no, hang, on because, hang on, because he wants to do trials literally, I think, within the Both next year. Musk says the company is planning to equip its first human patient with, it, with that technology by the end of next year. What? The, Threads are very tiny, um, and there's a lot of them. Elon Musk is once again making headlines and giving hope to those like Terry Little. If it would change her life, I would absolutely welcome it. Terry's mom suffered a stroke 20 years ago. It completely changed her life. She's been uh, in a wheelchair since then, and she has had uh, extremely low quality of life since then. Tesla CEO says the startup he founded, Neuralink, is developing a device with threads as small as a neuron that could repair motor function or provide a memory boost to cancer patients, quadriplegics, and stroke victims, just to name a few. This, um, I think, has a very good purpose, uh, which is to cure important diseases um, and ultimately to help secure humanities. Uh, future. He can do it. He's a genius. Russ Hancock, the CEO of joint venture Silicon Valley, believes if anyone can merge human beings with artificial intelligence, it's Elon Musk himself. This is a guy that has changed the world as we know it with an electric car that actually works. This is a guy that's boring tunnels through the earth. This is a guy that's trying to put people on Mars. Now he's trying to get inside your brain. It's one thing to bore holes into the ground, which is what he does with Boring Company, now potentially looking for volunteers to bore tiny little holes into their skulls. Uh, how far are they from uh, potentially getting the approval to do that? Well, you know, they're claiming that uh, they would like to start human trials next year. I mean, the first batch of people that do this are not going to be typical consumers, it's going to be people who have been paralyzed and really have no other options. And, and so, you know, according to Neuralink, they want to start these trials near the end of next year. The big issue, of course, is, is the FDA and, and whether they would approve something like this. Neuralink has a really high bar. My guest today is one of the most famous whistleblowers of our time, a man who revealed the existence of US mass surveillance programs spying on citizens all around the world, Edward Snowden, former CIA employee and NSA contractor. Edward Snowden, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. But what's really changed uh, most dramatically from the world of 2013 to the world of today is everybody is aware that Facebook is up to no good, Google is up to no good, that all of these companies are really trying to shape and influence not just our societies, but our lives, our, our, our buying habits, uh, every kind of general behavior that we have uh, in a deeply targeted and personal way. 
and it's technology that is enabling this and making it all possible for the first time. Now again, that hasn't solved the problem, but the first step to solving any problem is we have to create a shared sense of understanding. We need a common sense of facts, and today we have that. One year ago, Tucker spoke to Gordon Chang about this system. Watch. What we have in China is that there's so many people there, of course. The government wants to control them, and so what they're doing is they're collecting data. They're collecting data from 600 million cameras that they'll have in place in 2020. They're going to have, you know, traffic checks, all the rest of it. This is being rolled out, and it's being rolled out very quickly. So, for instance, you've got people who are not allowed to board planes and trains because their social credit score is far too low. I'm not kidding. For example, if you have frivolous spending that'll work against you in China. Smoking in a smoke-free zone, that'll cost you points. Is that the society you want to live in? Guess what? It's coming to America, courtesy of Silicon Valley. Brett Larson says it's true, and he is on <laughs> Fox News headlines 24-7. Brett, that's scary stuff in China. It started in it 2014. Is. They're rolling it out now. Yes. What do you mean it's heading here? It's heading here, and it's, it's kind of already here. And when you think about it, we share a lot of personal information on Facebook. We share when we're out with our friends. We might share when we're out having drinks with our friends. Maybe we're on the beach. Maybe we're having a fun vacation. A traffic light with facial recognition. Cross on red, face a public shaming, and lose social credit points. In some Chinese cities, it's already a reality. Even those who sort their trash incorrectly have to reckon with point deductions in some places, as well as the penalties for low scores, like losing the right to ride the fast train. The point system is scheduled for full implementation across China by the end of 2020. Of course, so much data is being harvested by technology companies in today's modern connected age that I doubt many people have a true handle on what's been collected about them. I think, Peter, the big development is machines not only can identify people, oh, sorry, cameras can not only identify people like up to 15 people in, in one scene, but they can also work out what you're doing. So in places like China, for example, which, um, you know, I suppose is... Um, this dystopian example of what we don't want to happen, have happening. Um, they're using it for jaywalking. There was one city uh, that was in a report I, I, um, I read last year where uh, they had a big um, uh, monitor up at the intersection and if anyone jaywalked or went uh, through the walk through the don't walk uh, period, uh, they would be shamed on this big TV and it was the actual computer attached to the cameras that was making those choices. Now this can uh, cause mistakes and in that case it did but the other point is that local governments kind of adopt their own systems with this and they're starting to in the Northern Territory and Queensland. You know, stadiums in Queensland are installing cameras with AI capability. It's being looked at in, in Perth as well. And you've got everyone collecting data and analysing it and, and maybe under the radar swapping it with each other and that becomes um, a really big issue in terms of so, so any vestige of privacy. Chris. 